What's going on everyone? Alex from Detroit Speed here and we have a three-part series coming up. Uh, this year at the Good Guys PPG Nationals, they went ahead and collected about 140 69 Camaros and they're calling it the summer of 69 to celebrate the 50th anniversary. So we have a handful of builds here. We'll walk around with Kyle and check out those, but we also have Mark Stilo here as well and they have five of his 69 Camaros in here. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. We're gonna talk to Kyle and Mark and just kind of talk about the cars that he built. What's going on, Mark? How you doing? And Kyle. Hey, look, Mark Stilo. Mark Stilo, <laughs> that's the guy right there. This is the man. So I know even there's customers I talk to all the time and they bring you up all the time about you know, just the, your builds and the forums and how they use what you do to, as inspiration for their cars. So we figured we'd uh, catch up with you and just talk about what you have here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, all this kind of started with Kyle and I back in 93. We built a, a, my first kind of mag, magazine quality car to compete in Car and Driver One Lap of America. So that car kind of started the line of cars. And then each one's been kind of an evolution from there where things have been done differently to kind of meet whatever kind of either competitions that came along or just builds qualities that magazines had right so you guys you guys have been friends for a while then huh we have there's actually more camaros that never quite made it to life yeah that, that, <laughs> too, that we tried things on and experimented on and drink beer around yeah didn't quite come, I think, to come together yeah well, i had five of them before i built my first uh the one in 93 and we I had one in college and that's kind of where Kyle and I met mm -hmm. down at Missouri University of Missouri Rolla which is now called Missouri School of Science and Technology right so that's where it all kind of started and uh, Kyle and I came up to Detroit and you know I was playing around with Camaros and then he started building one and his car a few more down the road here so yep yeah and we'll talk about we'll catch up with that car and probably part two of this video so um let's I guess we'll start here at Hellfire yeah. so I mean this is one that I know a lot of people have seen it circulates a bunch on Instagram and Facebook and all over the internet. So it's a, a pretty internet famous car. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about this? So this car was kind of an evolution, you know, you know, back when I was kind of talking about the first car was built to run one lap of America. Then an event came along called uh, Optima Ultimate Car, uh, Optima Ultimate Street Car Invitational. So a big shootout right after SEMA. And I had a car we we ran in 2000 that did well. That's a few cars back here. Did well with that car. Did well with another car. Then this car was like my kind of my third shot at trying to do well at Optima. And the competition changed. The rules the rules didn't really change, but the venue changed. The competition changed. And this car would have been a definitely contender the year before, but you know the, the competition really kind of moved. But right, yeah, this thing's all carbon fiber front clip. Um, the seven liter LS9 made 900 and this one made 950 and change on the 93 octane fuel. So uh, all the carbon fiber on the front of it knocked about 110 pounds off the nose. So I was trying to get a 3,300 pound car with 51% front weight distribution. It also got me 315 tires on the front. And uh, this car worked incredibly well. It's just, uh, you know, not got the same uh, center of gravity and track width as some of the more modern cars. You know, one thing that's cool about Mark's always done in all of his cars is taking what's what's there in the OE market, just like this engine. I mean, to make 950 horsepower, but to make it, you know, Charlie drives this car um, all the time. Like yeah. you guys said, it's mm -hmm. always on the road. It's always on a tour somewhere, and to have that kind of power. And believe me, I've chased this car the tail lights um, through a corner but they get very distant down the straightaway when you're following <laughs> yeah. Mark in this car but that's what's cool about it is it's very very fast awesome looking car but it's so comfortable to drive too and that's one thing that Mark's always really done well is to blend all that about you know the wind noise the squeaks and rattles the power of the fuel economy and put it all into one package and made better and better cars for the industry because a lot of people have wanted to do the same thing right yeah so since I built this car I sold it to a good friend of mine Charlie Lillard and this car has been on, well, you can see the windshield. That's how yeah. many events this car has been on. So what's that? One, two, three, four power tours, two good guys tours, four, four good guys tours. So this car has been literally almost all over the United States. So yeah, we've right. started it at 20 degrees Fahrenheit and up in the Rockies and desert climates and everything else. So, you know, all the Detroit Speed products on this thing have been super durable. We've never failed any of that stuff. We've broken other stuff, 
but we've never broken any of the Detroit Speed product <laughs> yeah. on this car. And what do you, as far as the engine management, it's just stock ECU? Yeah, so this was a stock uh, GM uh, E67 engine controller, which is real similar to the LS9 crate engine harness mm -hmm. that, that GM sells. But we went in and, you know, rubbed on a little bit. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so we changed some things around. Cool. Very pretty car. I've always loved this color too. Bro. Yeah, so this awesome is Volkswagen color. Salsa Red. This yeah. is PPG Volkswagen Salsa Red. Awesome color. You'll see it repeated because I, yeah. I liked it. I think another cool feature too, I love how you do the badges because it just looks like a, you know, like old vintage, yeah, old dealer. school Chevy dealer. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, I stole that from somebody else. I'm not gonna take full credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> cool idea there. So then this car, this car started off life and uh, uh, we, this was, I built this car originally for Charlie and he calls everybody Jackass. So this car's name was Jackass, which started <laughs> off as kind of unusual. So this was the first car that ever had a stock LS9 running in it outside General Motors. So this, this was a featured in Hot Rod. Uh, 2009, 2008 time frame. So Charlie had it for a bunch of years. Um, he ran it around a long time with a stock LS9 in it and another company's subframe underneath of it. So then I bought it back from Charlie. We changed it all back over to Detroit Speed chassis. Works a lot better now. And then I re-engined it with, a, this is a 970 horsepower uh, LS9. And this one runs on uh, flex fuel, it's got E85. Uh, so this, this car was, reworked after that car so the learnings from this car rolled into this car right uh we changed the cooling package to a different cnr racing radiator setup we set it up on flex fuel so this thing will run you know, it's kind of a dr jekyll mr hyde so it'll make like eight eight ninety on pump fuel the 970 on e85 so but on on e85 i can take it to an open you know how hard it is guy take it to an open track day uh 80, 80 degree Fahrenheit and run a full 20 minute session and it won't overheat. Yeah, well, that says a lot. So well, what's cool about this too is from the outside hood down, it looks like just a clean, simple car. And I think Mark and I style are a lot of the same too. You like those cheap old Camaros the way they look, but right. underneath it's it's anything and, and the technology that it packs is just really cool. Yeah, and I think the, and the brakes are kind <laughs> of a, a dead giveaway. It, right. it's, it's hiding a little something, but yeah. I mean, otherwise it just looks like wheels and tires on a 69 Camaro. Yeah, this car has Bosch ABS on it and so does that car. So uh, yeah, these cars uh, work really well. So this was what number? Mark, because so, you've done how many now? It's almost 17, you're on your 17th first gen Camaro Yeah, build? so this one was number 11 okay. when I built it the first time. Okay, and, and that was like 2.0 version. Yeah, so then we re, re I took all the road rash off of it and re, 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 re squared it away. All I changed was everything. <laughs> when I bought it from Kyle, I'm like, well, this is a great, I mean, not Kyle, but from Charlie, like, this is a great parts car. <laughs> but did you catch that? 17 first gen yeah, Camaros. 17. So. so, I mean, people all the time, I you know, uh, we post on Facebook and Instagram, and they're like, oh, you guys built another 69 Camaro. But I mean, that's, they're all different. You know, there's, there's something different yeah. about every single one. And, I mean, while you take trends from Hellfire and you put them in the Jackass, it's still, it's a different car. So I think that's pretty cool that even though you've done 17 of them, they're all different in their own way. So well, even like, you know, and you found out too, you know, GM built a quarter million of them in two different assembly plants and the variation from car to car is, is you know, we were, we were hammering them out at GM back yeah. in the day. Yeah. A lot of 69 Camaros out there. Yeah. The 17 include the the burgundy maroon car you had in college that was crashed? Yeah. It does count that. Yeah. yeah. Those crashed? Up all of them. What's yeah. the story with that one? I was I supposed was... to go with him to a party that night. Yeah. And, and so... I didn't for some reason. I went home from from school and you went to the party. And... Yeah. I was, uh, we were coming back from a party. I was chasing a good friend of mine and I just overran a corner in Missouri and it shot off the side of the highway and right. riddled a tree. I've heard Kyle say stuff about that. I think he calls that running out of talent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I blame tires. He made the, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but it killed the passenger side seat of that car. I mean, the passenger side of that car, I remember. And it was a really cool car. I mean, it had the Recaros in it yeah. and uh, black houndstooth, uh, black and white houndstooth seats. Really cool car. I yeah, the, car. the road sign went through the floor pan through like the passenger side into the back seat. Yeah, oh, I man. feel like I kind of escaped that night. <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, I didn't go to work that night. 
But it was all chalked up to science for 69 Camaros. Yeah. And how they live and don't live. <laughs> well, that thing, we tore it. It actually hit so hard it broke the A-pillar right here. Yeah. And tore it off. Mark was still rubbing his forehead on Monday in class that day. Just <laughs> <laughs> hanging out. So, so this what's is, this one here? So this is kind of, uh, this was kind of the game changer car for me. You know, this was, uh, this car was built. So I ran this car in the Optima shootout in 2009 and it came in third overall. And I had this car in build and I was like, we need to up power this car. So uh, this was the first 427 cubic inch LS9 that we built. And this thing made like, uh, don't quote me on the exact number, it was like 870 or something like that. Right. So we showed up with this car in 2010 and well, and what did you guys think when I rolled this thing out? Yeah, it was it was just like a spaceship, you know. I mean, it was <laughs> the power, just the way it was put together. It was the force to be reckoned with that year. Yeah, so right. That, so we showed up on on kill, and uh, the funniest thing about so the Dutch boys painted this car, and it was perfect, perfect. And I went over right. to their house, and I was like, hey, the car was all prepped, ready to go to SEMA. And I was like, hey, I think I these Goodyear tires are faster. So I brought over mounted tires and wheels. I was like, we need to throw them on the car and take it to Gingerman and try these tires out. And I'll never forget it. Paul looked at me and, and Joe, and we loaded on a trailer, took it to Gingerman, and we just beat the tar out of the car. But it was like two seconds a lot faster. And we brought it back to the house and rubber and all the fender wells and everything. And I'll never forget, we spent like that whole night redetailing the whole car before, SEMA. before it then shipped it to SEMA the next day. <laughs> So uh, yeah, this it was that was a good year. And then this car went on to be in uh, the Sony Gran Turismo PlayStation oh, game. Yeah. Okay, so, that's cool. So if you guys uh, go into Gran, uh, Gran Turismo and go under Stilo Engineering, you can find this car and you can crash it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone's gonna do that. So and Mary Posey's car is in there too, so you can run Mary's car into oh, my yeah. car. Thank yeah. You. So this is, uh, as of right now, this is the most recent car, right? Yeah, so this car I built two years ago. Uh, I bought this car, uh, well actually, I talked Charlie into buying it because I wasn't sure what, it, what it was, how good it was. And uh, I found it on eBay, and then I bought it off of Charlie. So it's an all original paint, uh, barn find, I think it came out of Oregon. And then we re-engined it and re it with all Detroit Speed chassis underneath of it. Uh, ABS brakes. This has got an LT4 in it, just a crate motor. But believe it or not, this car ran, ran the same lap times at Gingerman as that car. Hmm. So I think it's a combination of the new Goodyear, the new yeah. rivals, yeah. and uh, just you know, just the evolution of different. The different components yeah i mean you still we're, as we build cars we learn on every single one just yeah. like you do right so i mean it's they always evolve you always take a little few things that work and what didn't work you leave behind and they get better each time yeah so this car's a blast I, I take it to open track days with like the shelby club or whatever right and uh man that's a lot of fun yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure you get a lot of looks too when you get you know What's you this? just pull up with this and it, it's kind of it's unsuspecting because i mean i guess it, it's original paint still yeah, I went out and I was like lapping the field with these Mustang guys, and they were like, "What the heck is Camaro that?" Camaro with a vinyl top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that you left the vinyl yeah. top and trim on it. I love the wheels too. Ford's on wheels, and we use them on just about everything we've been building recently. So it's a good looking wheel. Yeah, they're good. They're strong. They're easy to clean. Uh, so it's you know it's uh, that car's been a, that car's a blast. I think it's just cool to I mean and hard to find a car like that Pantina. Right, because you really you didn't have to do anything. You didn't blend anything, pantini anything. It was like that. Right? We had to pound this den out of it. Yeah. Uh, we when we took it apart, we found nine dead rat carcasses stuffed up in this thing. I mean, it was, yeah. it, it was you know it'd been sitting somewhere in a barn for a long time. Mm -hmm. There were rats up in the top, up in the quarter panels. <laughs> uh, kind of explained why there was an open can of coffee beans inside the yeah, car. Yeah. We right. try to get rid of the dead the dead smell. vermin smell. Yeah. It's out now, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> Mark almost started smoking again. Yeah, <laughs> the, the rat smell. So this, car, this car is a throwback. So this car was built in 98 time frame. And Kyle and I had, I had this car at Good Guys 
was that 2000 or 1999? 2000. 2000. Yeah. So I had this car at, down here in Columbus PPG in 2000, and Kyle had Twister in 2000. That's yep. correct. And they were both competing against each other for Street Machine of the Year. And we were both in top five. We both yep. drove the cars down. We didn't own a trailer. Nope. And uh, yeah, we both drove the cars down and just hanging out. We didn't know what to do. Yeah, the best story was Kyle's like, man, we got to get there early so we get a good parking spot. So we were up with the crack of dawn. I think we were parked out here in this line at hey, we 6 a.m. P1, I think. Yeah, we were P2. <laughs> and I'm sitting there drinking my coffee, and about 7.15, two more cars show up, and I'm kind of like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at least I, didn't, I don't forget. So the, we had a good parking spot, yeah, though. This, the cool thing about this car was uh, I, we, I sold it to Charlie, and then Charlie sold it to a guy in, in uh, Arizona. And this thing is a time capsule. So this thing is exactly the way I built it, rebuilt it in 2001. That's so, what I was gonna ask, because even just, if you take a step back and look at it, and then compare it to uh, you know, a bunch of other cars here, and even the cars that you brought, it's still, it looks modern still. Like yeah. it looks like it could be a modern pro touring so, build. The last time the engine was stuffed in this car, Kyle and I did it before the GM Employee Car Show oh, that's right. in 2000. That's right. 2000, yeah, 2000. So we, I'd blown the engine up on one lap that's of right. America. It was rebuilt by Kurt Urban. Yeah. And I talked Kyle into coming over and helped me stuff the motor in it before the Employee Car Show at GM. I remember the tech center that day. Yeah. I remember that. So we, I told my neighbor we were going to fire the engine up about 4 a.m. We'd run it for about 15 seconds and shut it off and Kyle and I were buttoning things up, getting fluid in it. We fired it at an open exhaust, shut it off, buttoned it up, and drove it to the car show the next day. So this engine hasn't been out of the, this car since, since then. then. Is there a, I think That's we awesome. most of the meetings that yeah. morning. <laughs> but it's still got all the original <laughs> AN lines. Yeah, and, that's what's cool. I had not seen under the hood of this for a while. So it's exactly the same. Then our friend of ours built this air cleaner, Jim Biondo. Yeah, that's right, I remember Jim. And uh, so it's just, it's just, it was cool to see it like, the only thing that's different is that somebody put some janky tires on it. But other than that, it's like it's it's just exactly the way it was. That's cool. So what what is the power plant? Is so it just a 350? A, this, so this was like a throwback Gen One. So so back in the day, they built what they called an Oldsmobile rocket block, which was a 9300 deck height uh, small block Chevy. But they were done for Oldsmobile for the NASCAR series, and it's got 18 degree Chevy heads on it. Um, with all the Jezel valve train, so it's a four-inch stroke, six and eighth-inch rod, Kurt Urban built motor, and back in 2000, this thing made I think six and a quarter, Oof, which wow. was pretty. I mean, stout. That, that, yeah, that's a, that's a ton of power. Yeah, this thing was a, this thing's an animal. Uh, so this we were running this thing in one lap of America, and we spun a rod at Sebring with it, and then we towed it back to Detroit. And, uh, it's been to a few open track days since then, but pretty much been sitting mm -hmm. in a shipping container in Arizona for the last 15, 12 years. Yeah. Well, All right. That's neat. It's cool, too, I mean, to see the parts evolve. I mean, we've both been very loyal to Jack and the guys at Vintage Air, and to see even how their parts have evolved, yeah. you know, through the years, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see the old tube and fin condenser that they used to sell in that era, and yep, again, that was... just how everything progressed. It's cool to open the hoods and see it. Yeah, see I the think. Parts. Yeah, back in the day, you know, we used to always run these HP filters, yep. remote filters, right. and you know that thing's huge. And now that the filters are really small, and um, so it's just you know, and the, <laughs> this car's you know, it it sat for had been fired in two years. Uh, Jason Ayers, the guy that owns it now, called me up and uh, said, "Well, throw a set of new injectors in it." It fired right up, and here it is. That's awesome. That's neat to see. But he called me, and I'm like. I think those are Excel 36 pound power injectors. That, that was. <laughs> it's amazing what you remember. Yeah. But this yeah. car was not mini tub. Um, so just a leaf spring car. But the rest, they were the rest were all mini tub. Yeah. And I this, this was my I, I hand built the spindles on the front of these things, and I made a short run production uh, run yeah, of tall right. spindles. So that's a fabricated front upright yeah. on these. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, the first car that. I think we mini tubbed, you mini tubbed was the Red Witch. Yeah. Right? Um, and that was what, in the mid 90s? That was probably? 1995. You and I were down there looking at it, and I said, well, we, if we cut it, we got to fix it. Right. So I remember just, the Sawzall. We just, <laughs> we, just, we just took a Sharpie, made a mark, and we cut it, and we moved the inner yeah. wheel wells in two inches. Yeah. So, just as a reminder to how long these guys have been in the game, I was born in 95. <laughs> so, I was born in 95, and these guys are building cars. So, uh, I know 
Mark and Kyle, you guys have been, you know, huge influencers in the, the pro touring market, and especially 69 Camaros and first gen Camaros. So thank you, Mark, for uh, taking the time to show us the cars that you brought here Appreciate this it. weekend. And thank you, Kyle, for sharing the time with us and telling some stories. I'm sure everyone's gonna appreciate that. So um, thank you guys. We'll, uh, we'll be back for part two. We're gonna walk around and talk about some of the cars that Kyle built at Detroit Speed and then uh, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you guys.